3rd of September, Monday, Palma de Mallorca, Spain, planet Earth. Um, this is my first attempt at trying to create some kind of video diary. It'd probably be sporadic and not on a regular basis. But I thought I'd share how the visit of Professor Anthony Capone then went. He um, is the world's first professor for planetary health based at the University of Sydney. And he's also a co-author of a recent report that was created by the Lancet Commission and the Rockefeller Foundation on planetary health and what it means to safeguard planetary health in the Anthropocene. So, while I'm not so keen on the, the wording of the Anthropocene, but that's a whole other story, the fact that, that Anthony asked whether he could come and visit me was a real surprise to me in a way. Um, about four or five weeks ago, he contacted me, told me that he was in Europe and that between a conference in Bonn with Future Earth in a number of meetings in London and in Cambridge, he had some time and he wondered whether it would fit my schedule for him to come down to Mallorca so we could have a conversation. And I was really quite surprised and flattered that he would take that time out to come and see me. And what it transpired in our conversation is that while he's been working with this group of uh, ecological epidemiolo epidemiologists and um, mainly medics and some earth system scientists on developing this concept of planetary health, he found himself to be one of the most holistic and um, widely thinking people in that group. And when he did some research on the evolution of the planet, uh, planetary health concept, he came across some of the papers that I wrote while I was doing my PhD research between 2004 and 2006, and some papers that I wrote in 2006 just after I published my PhD. My PhD was on design for human and planetary health, a holistic, integral approach to complexity and sustainability. And um, because it was in a design school, I could break a number of established boundaries for PhD work, because at the time, PhDs in design were still relatively new. And I had come in on a scholarship from, uh, like the scholarship was by the, by, by the faculty I was at, the um, Duncan of Jordan's School of Art and Design, the Center for the Study of Natural Design, which was run by my mentor, and my PhD supervisor, Professor Seaton Baxter, who I owe a tremendous debt of gratitude to. And basically, in that work, I sketched out what it might mean to design for human and planetary health. And I used my background in complexity theory and earth system science, what I learned at Schumacher College in the Masters in Holistic Science, to advance a theory of how health is really an emergent property in complex dynamic systems. And it emerges through the interactions and relationships of all the agents in that system. And it emerges at different scales that are interconnected. So I use this idea of scale linking, how the local is linked to the regional, to the bioregional, to the local ecosystem and the global and how health really depends on right relationships and healthy dynamics that, that allow the health of the whole to express itself because ultimately the whole has a healthy dynamic as it evolves. But of course, everybody who participates, like each one of us and the whole of humanity, influence the health of the whole. And so yeah, this notion that individual health, community health, bioregional ecosystems health and planetary health are intricately linked 
and that ultimately health is the pattern that connects and is a scale linking pattern has strongly influenced Anthony Capon's thinking and through him also to some extent that new commission on planetary health. And so for me that's a real ex exciting um, news to find out. I, I, I was aware of the report but to be contacted by one of its principal authors and to be told that this PhD research that I did more than 10 years ago actually had made a difference to them is giving me an enormous uh, gratification and, and, and joy and, and also I feel like all that hard work has not been in vain and maybe I was just a little bit ahead of my time because at the time when I tried to get postdoctoral research funding I, I had a brief postdoctoral fellowship from the University of Dundee and I just couldn't get any funding. Um, being in a design school when I wrote to the Arts and Humanities Research Council they said this is terribly scientific it's all about um, ecosystems restoration and about renewable energy and sustainable transport, sustainable cities, sustainable product design. Um, but from a very scientific perspective, dealing with climate change and, and, and um, well, at the time they weren't called planetary boundaries, but basically dealing with the planetary boundaries. And, and so they said, why don't you talk to the arts, the, the um, Environmental and Physical Science Research Council, they might fund something like that. And so when I did that, they would then come back to me and say, but you're in a design school, what are you talking to us for? And when I wrote to both of them, copying them into the replies that I'd gotten from them, they basically said, uh, why don't you go and talk to the Social Science Research Council because um, you don't fit here. Or maybe even the Economic Research Council might um, be willing to take this on. Long story short, I, back then, just couldn't get any funding in conventional academia. They were talking about interdisciplinarity and transdisciplinarity, but they were just not ready for it. And these big questions were just something that nobody wanted to fund. So in a way, that was a kind invitation to do what I've done in the 12 years since, which is to dance on the edge between uh, more pioneering educational NGOs and projects that are practically on the ground experimenting with how we might create a more sustainable and thriving future and occasionally link them into work with universities and with local and national government. And so to find now that there's actually momentum, that there's now a professor for planetary health and that already Harvard has now created another chair that also has the word planetary health in the title. It's something like environmental restoration and planetary health. And um, Anthony came on Thursday, picked him up from the airport. We had a nice conversation in the afternoon and a walk by the, by the sea. And then we spent the whole of Friday really talking in a very wide-ranging, wonderful conversation about how we might collaborate and how he sees that field evolving. And then I also saw him again on Saturday evening for just a, a, a final chat before he left on, on Sunday. And initially we intended to record part of our conversation on Saturday, but in the end it was such a nice evening and we were sitting watching the sunset and just got talking and decided that we could always do the recording on a Zoom call. Um, so watch that space. So we talked about a huge range of topics, but what we both agreed on is that even within this budding movement of planetary health, there's still a need for a much more holistic approach. And he said what he liked about my work is that it focused on change. It focused on how can we actually make an influence and become planetary healers. How can we work on restoration and regeneration? And he even brought a copy of my book asking me to sign it and, and um, complimented me on, on, on that work. And 
basically he said that not everybody in that community is aware of my work but he would like to help them find out about it because it has this very holistic approach and then he showed me a graphic that shows how he now in his talks con conceives and introduces planetary health and it is very much linked to what I was calling scale linking issues in my PhD. How do we move people? How do we house people? How do we feed people? How do we um, provide energy for people? And um, how do we fit into this world? How do we heal the health dynamics at ecosystems and planetary levels? And so in talking about this, he, he also absolutely agreed on the necessity for a bioregional approach that that while we definitely need to work local in all localities everywhere and that salutogenic health generating regenerative design has to be carefully adapted to the biocultural uniqueness of place he's, he's, he's on board with that um, he also agrees that these local initiatives have to be fully aware of the nested holes they sit in and the, the next wider hole, the bioregion, is critically important. His, his own work is in, in mainly in, in city health. And, of course, cities sit within a particular bioregion. So you could say local community, cities, bioregion, if you, if you want to be more granular in this scale-linking approach. But then we also agreed that, to some extent, the, the national scale isn't really something that has a sort of biological precedence. It's, it's a completely socially constructed concept to say this is where the line, you can see it when you lo look at the maps, like so many, particularly in, in the former colonies, so many borders have been drawn by the people in power with a ruler and their straight lines. And that's not how the biomes and the ecosystems that they, these straight lines cross actually function. So we, we both agreed that as we're talking seventh generation thinking and deep transformations of the human presence on Earth, what we should hold in mind is that national boundaries are an anachronism that we might well find that won't be part of the future in which humanity has learned to act as a planetary healer and a appropriate participant in the emergence of health at all scales within the planetary system. And um, I thought that was also very encouraging that, 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 that we, we agreed on, on this. And of course, it's a very politically tricky issue um, because it's very difficult to talk to state actors, to, to national leaders, and basically say uh, your unit of administration and governance might be an anachronism in the planetary era. But maybe it is also important to open this conversation because so much of national boundaries have been created in a time that relatively recently, at the end of the era of empires, as Robert Gilman puts it, that 5,000 year period where we started to create systems of power over and power against rather than power with. And it's the split of our unity and interbeing with the natural world that created environmental scarcities that then created the need to fission and de de devise, divide and conquer um, the human family. And so we created these artificial boundaries through religion and also through national boundaries. So one of the things, another thing that, that we talked about is how ecosystems regeneration is vitally, or restoration is vitally important and how hopeful it is that UNEP and a number of actors are now very strongly behind the idea of creating a decade for ecosystems restoration, which would start in 2020 and run until 2030. 
And really that is our last hope that in that decade, there is such a push towards regeneration everywhere, rest ecosystems restoration on all levels, that um, we really see a shift into what I've been calling the century of regeneration, the, the time where we really turn back the clock on the massive damage that humanity has caused on planet Earth and begin to reverse that damage and show that as life, we are capable of creating conditions conducive to life. And we also talked about how we need to raise awareness that this scale-linking characteristic of health is going on at all scales, that basically you can start with cellular health. It is about what kind of enzymes, what kind of nutrients, cellular nutrients and, and um, how much water, everything, like the, the, the dynamics within a single cell, which is in itself already a complex dynamic system, are dynamics that can either lead to the emergence of health as a property of that complex dynamic system or of ill health. And then since that cell in many cases sits either in an environment or in a wider multicellular organism, Organ health is a agglomeration of cells and their emergent health. So the health of cells affects the health of organs, our heart, our brain, our lungs, our vital functions. And of course that affects the complex dynamic system which is a human individual and the emergence of health at that scale. And then we need to be aware that when we look at the scale of the human being and emergence of health at that scale, we need to understand that we are walking ecosystems. We are actually on us and in us. There are more non-human cells than there are human cells. We carry microbial, fungal, bacterial cells in our guts on our tongue, in our mouth cavity, on our skin, everywhere, around our eyes. All of that contributes to maintaining a healthy human body. So we are walking ecosystems and the health of the ecosystems within 